Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Bethel Baptist Church of Pasadena, California, where John T. McCall is our senior pastor. We pray that you're being blessed through this ministry. Meanwhile, if you'd like to be a blessing to the Bethel Baptist Church ministry financially, you can do it easily at BethelPasadena.org. Just click on the Giving tab and follow the instructions. Your support of this ministry is greatly appreciated. Welcome in today uh, to our Wednesday virtual edition of Getting the Word Out. How we bless and praise God for your presence today, tuning in to the broadcast. Uh, I'm Pastor John McCall of the Bethel Missionary Baptist Church of Pasadena, California. Listen, listen, listen. I'm so excited today of what God is doing. Uh, listen, we're still in stay in the house mode, uh, still uh, maintaining what we've been asked to do, uh, but we're broadcasting today uh, from my yard. Uh, we're gradually making our way out of the house. Uh, we're going to go about this thing very methodically, uh, very carefully, uh, listen to what the doctors are saying to us, uh, and consulting God about how fast we should move. Today we have an exciting word for you. I pray you are blessed uh, on today by this broadcast. Listen, I'm still excited about that word this past weekend, Lord bless my house. And so on this Wednesday edition, I want to dig a little deeper uh, into that word from Sunday. Man, it blessed me. So, so, so I hope it blessed you and your family. Uh, during today's uh, broadcast, I've got two scriptures I want us to look at today and go in, in depth with. Uh, one is found in 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 11 and 12, and Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 and 2. So get your Bibles, get your iPad, uh, and, and let's go deeper today in the Word. 2 Samuel chapter 6, verses 11 and 12. The ark of the Lord stayed at the house of Obed-Edom from Gath for three months, 90 days. And the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and his whole family. King David was told, the Lord has blessed Obed-Edom's home and everything he owns because of the ark of God. Then David joyfully went to get the ark of God from Obed-Edom's house and bring it into the city of David. Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verses 1 and 2. If you listen obediently to the voice of God, your God, and heartily obey all his commandments, but I command you today, God, your God, will place you on high, high above all the nations of the world, and all these blessings will come down on you and spread out beyond you because you have responded to the voice of God, your God. You remember, uh, you remember that song by Byron Cage, um, The Presence of the Lord is Here? You know, The Presence of the Lord is Here. Uh, I feel it. It's in the atmosphere. Uh, and it goes on to say that the Spirit of the Lord is here. And then it says that the power of the Lord is here. Uh, and that song says, I can feel it in the atmosphere. Uh, and, and so this notion of God's presence, uh, of God's presence, uh, not just in our homes, but God's presence in our lives. Uh, that it's his presence that makes the difference. Uh, and Israel understood the value of God's presence. And I wonder on today, how highly do you value the presence of God in your life, uh, in your family's life? Uh, because all believers understand and know that it is the presence of the Lord that makes the difference. Uh, for the believers, uh, it is the significance of the presence of the Lord in our lives that gives us the confidence and the assurance of knowing that whatever we're confronted with, uh, whatever life brings our way, whatever the circumstances are, God has promised never to leave us nor to forsake us. And it's the power that gives us victory. In fact, it activates our faith. Uh, uh, to see beyond what's happening right now, to simply know that the presence of the Lord is real. This 90-day this, this window um, um, where the ark of God was present 
in the house of Obed Edom. Uh, it blessed his household. Uh, and, 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 and the ark that's uh, symbolic of the presence of the Lord. Uh, today we, uh, we are saved uh, by faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, and, and, and once we um, confess him as Lord and Savior, um, uh, Ephesians 1.13 says that, that, that our salvation is now sealed by the Holy Ghost. Uh, and so we are believers now, and, and God now dwells on the inside of us, and he makes the commitment never to leave us nor to forsake us. Uh, and by virtue of, of being saved, we now have the very real presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Uh, and so as believers, we have victory uh, that we're overcomers uh, and, and just simply by our faith of knowing that God is with us uh, through any and all situations, even in this pandemic. Uh, I know what the world is saying. I know what politicians are saying. Uh, but for the believers, we have the assurance of God's presence with us. All right. Uh, let's dig a little deeper uh, into our text today. Um, uh, this covenant. Uh, that God made with uh, Israel in the Old Covenant, the Old Testament, and now in the New Dispensation of Grace in the New Testament, God makes to us some, some, some concrete promises uh, in our lives. Um, uh, but, but the first uh, area of getting the promise into our lives, in Deuteronomy it says, if you listen, if you listen, if you listen. Uh, have you heard the saying sometimes? Uh, that it went in one ear uh, and came out of the other. Uh, uh, that active listening, uh, when we're hearing the word preached to us, read to us, uh, when we're studying, is so critical to receiving the blessings of the Lord. Uh, uh, hearing what God is saying to us. Uh, that the power of listening um, and, 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 and listening, listening, listening is the act of mindfully, mindfully, your focus. Uh, and you're hearing uh, and attempting to comprehend the meaning of the words being spoken to you by somebody else. Um, and, 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 and really in life, listening um, is perhaps the most important ingredient uh, for building strong, healthy relationships. Uh, have you ever uh, been talking to someone on the phone or in person uh, and you look up and they're distracted uh, or, or you ask them, uh, are you listening? Did you hear what I said? Uh, and they weren't. Uh, you know, listening, 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 listening is so critical. And the book of Deuteronomy says to the people of God that if you listen, if you listen, um, uh, one version says if you listen obediently, uh, it's one thing to listen and hear, but it's another thing to listen and be obedient to the word of God, to the voice of God, and to what God is saying to you about your life. Uh, the book of James, uh, in, in the James chapter 1, verse 23, uh, James says to be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Uh, uh, be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. And many people hear the word, but never apply the word to their lives, never put the word into action. And so in order to benefit from the blessings of God in your life, you have got to be an active listener and a doer, practical application. Uh, let me ask you today, who are you listening to? What are you listening to? Um, uh, uh, whose voice in your life is the strongest? Uh, is it the voice of the Lord or is it some other voice? Or is it someone else speaking in your ear that you're listening to more than you are listening to the voice of God? Uh, uh, in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews the, uh, the writer says that, 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 that God, uh, has in these last days spoken to us by his son, and he has appointed heirs of everything to us. Um, uh, in, in Old Testament, God spoke to the prophets, uh, but, but, but now he has spoken through his son. Uh, and are you listening to his son? Um, uh, are you being obedient to what the son has revealed to us through the word of God? Uh, it's amazing, it's amazing uh, of how many people hear the word, uh, take witness to the word, uh, but have a lot of difficulties applying the word 
to their lives. And, and the Word is designed to change us. Uh, the Word is designed to draw us closer to God. Uh, and, and the Word is designed to give us the information we need on how to live a life pleasing to the Lord. Um, and even in this, these days, God is still talking. God is still talking to us. Uh, and the question is, are you listening? Uh, are you aware? Uh, you know, even in this pandemic, uh, you've noticed um, uh, during the daytime that a few planes flying in the sky and uh, uh, even at night, uh, neighbors are in and the quietness uh, of the evening. Uh, and, and I wonder, I wonder uh, in the quietness, uh, does quietness make you nervous? Uh, does, does, does quietness to you bring on anxiety uh, in your life? Uh, it's through being still. Uh, and I discovered uh, in this pandemic, uh, in the evening when it's quiet and it's still, uh, to go and read the Word and to pray and to meditate. And you'll be amazed at how God speaks to you. Um, um, at the Bethel Church, uh, over the past year, uh, I've encouraged the members to set aside their personal prayer time with God. You know, for some people, for them it's early in the morning. Uh, for others, it's at noonday. For others, it's, it's in the evening. Uh, we, we need to set aside your time and, 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 and pick your time uh, uh, that when you are, are readily available and you are alert uh, and you've got energy uh, to read your word, uh, to engage in some prayer time with God, uh, and then once you finish praying, uh, to sit there still and allow him to speak back to you. Uh, God is still speaking. And even in this pandemic, uh, I believe he wants to reveal himself to us and for us to get to know him uh, for who he really is. Uh, and the Bible says that God is love. Uh, the Ark of the Covenant uh, brought in blessings to the house of Obed Edom. And for every believer today uh, who trusts in God, uh, that his presence in your life, his presence in your house brings blessings. You know, uh, a lot of my young adults, uh, um, when I speak to them, um, you know, one of the questions that I get the most from them is that, Pastor, um, how do you know when God is speaking to you? Um, 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 uh, how, can, how, how can you know uh, that is God? You know, and you, you know, the basic answer is if it's from his word. Uh, then you know it's God. Uh, if it's not from His Word, then you you know that's not God speaking to you. But 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 God speaks to us through a multiplicity of ways. He speaks to us through His Word. Uh, uh, getting to read His Word and to know His Word and to apply His Word uh, to our lives. Uh, he speaks to us through Jesus. Uh, you know Jesus came and He lived, uh, and and the Bible records His journey and 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 Jesus came to reveal to us. Uh, who God really is, uh, and, and, and God is love, you know, and compared to whatever you think, um, uh, Jesus revealed to us who his Father is, and, and his Father is love, uh, and, and Jesus displayed all the qualities of the Father through his life. Um, 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 God speaks to us through nature, through creation. Uh, when you look, uh, and when you look at the sky and the sun, the moon, the stars, and, and you look at the mountains, and, and even look at yourself, uh, how, how God wonderfully detailed and made us. Uh, you know, that God speaks through creation. Uh, he speaks to us, and you got to know there is a God who, uh, who scooped out uh, uh, of the valleys and hung the mountains and, and the seas and all of that. Um, God speaks to us, and, and, and many people are not cognizant. Uh, of the fact of how God created all of this. He spoke it into existence. Um, uh, he speaks to us through other believers. You know, um, uh, we pray uh, and ask God to uh, speak to me, show me, and then another believer comes and confirms the word of God in our lives. He, he speaks through other believers. Um, who do you have around you uh, who speaks into your lives? Uh, 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 if you're married, uh, husbands, are you speaking into your wife's life? Wives, 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 listen, are you speaking to your husband lives? Who, who, who speaks into your life? Who tells you? Who reaffirms you? You know, you know we, we read the word of God, uh, uh, but we need other believers sometimes just to reaffirm with us and to stand with us and to pray uh, with us. Um, uh, he speaks to us through music, you know, and, 
And, uh, uh, and even as a pastor, uh, I'm not a singer, uh, you know, and I, I think if God gave me the gift to sing, my head would probably get too big for my body. Uh, uh, but you want to have a song in your heart, uh, you know, um, 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 a, a song that, that you can sing even to yourself uh, 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 that gives you a pause and gives you a relief. Uh, um, have, what what's your song? Uh, and I, I'm I, I'm not talking about Beyonce or any of that, but you know, but what's your song? Is it Jesus keep me near the cross? Uh, uh, no, what's your song? Uh, that when you hum it, when you sing it, when it listens to you, uh, it speaks to your soul. Uh, it makes a difference in your life. When you're down, does it pick you up? Uh, what's your song? Uh, then God speaks to us through circumstances, uh, through this pandemic. Uh, what has God been speaking to you? Uh, what has he been saying to you through all of this? Has he been showing you he's a way maker? Has he been showing you he's a keeper? Uh, listen, listen, uh, um, uh, I got a call uh, yesterday from my pastor friend and uh, who told me uh, that his daughter is off the ventilator, uh, uh, that she's up and walking and talking, uh, you know, and I said, man, was that your shot I heard? Uh, listen, listen, uh, God speaks to us and he shows us who he is. Uh, and I said, man, I said, I'm shouting for you right now. Uh, uh, that, that, that what is God speaking to you in this pandemic? Uh, through all of what's going on, uh, uh, he's a healer. He's a keeper. He is a provider. He is a protector. He's a shelter in the mighty. All those things that, that you've heard about, uh, that, you know, you know uh, is he that to you right now? Is he really real to you right now? He speaks to us through life circumstances. Um, but then, he speaks to us through his spirit. Um, Holy Spirit speaks to us. Uh, if you're careful to listen to that voice uh, uh, that tells you when to speak, when not to speak, uh, where to go, when not to go, uh, uh, Holy Spirit speaks to us. Holy Spirit is alive and relevant uh, uh, his job is to lead us and to guide us into our truth and to convict us of sin. He's our comforter. Uh, he's our God. Uh, and, and today, is he speaking to you? And then God speaks to us through prayer. Oh, man, listen, listen. The importance of prayer in the life of any believer. Uh, 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 prayer is so vital. Uh, 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 prayer, prayer, prayer. Prayer, talking to God, uh, uh, letting our requests be made known to him, uh, uh, this relationship, this fellowship uh, that we have to God, and, and we speak to him and we talk to him through prayer. Uh, God speaks to us. Um, let me ask you, uh, are you committed to listening? Uh, are you committed to listening and doing? Uh, see, 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 listening and doing determines our destiny. Uh, you know, uh, and, and, and you've heard me say it, and I'm going to say it again uh, on this broadcast, uh, that success in life, uh, to a large extent, is based upon your willingness and your obedience to follow instructions. To follow instructions. Listen, this stay at home piece, uh, man, uh, uh, it has helped shape uh, a lot of things in my life the past two months of so staying home. Now, I'm used to going out on the go, going to meetings, going to see people, uh, and having to adjust to stay in the house to be safe, uh, to avoid risk of danger to myself and bring it home to my family. Man, following directions. And sometimes, you know, it gets difficult. Uh, but through prayer and surrender, uh, you know, we, we, you know, we're making it through this pandemic right now. Uh, and see, God still wants to bless you. And, and, and somebody, somebody, somebody is saying right now, somebody is saying right now, Pastor, uh, you don't understand my lifestyle. You know, I really haven't listened. I really haven't been a doer um, of the word. Um, so, so how does that apply to me? Uh, that how do I get this blessing over my house? Well, I'm glad you asked. God still wants to bless you. Uh, he still wants to, to bless you. Um, and, 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 and there is no depth you could ever sink. There is no height you could ever go. Uh, there is no sin you could ever commit um, that God won't forgive uh, and have his presence available to you in your life. Um, and, but hear me with this. Um, 
you know, um, God convicts us of our sin, um, but, but there's a difference between conviction and guilt. Um, and for many people, unsaved and saved, um, that, that they are struggling with guilt and shame. And, and hear me well, uh, guilt and shame is a trick of the enemy. Uh, uh, it's a trick of the enemy to keep you held in bondage, uh, to feel and believe that whatever you've done, uh, God can't forgive you. Uh, listen, 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 that's not true. Uh, 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 that's why Jesus came to die for our sins. Uh, but you can't be fooled into the fact of believing that because of how you lived and what you've done, uh, that you can never have the presence of God. Come out of that today. In fact, I rebuke that on your life right now. Uh, 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 if that's your issue right now, uh, all you have to do is confess that uh, uh, to the Lord right now. You know, uh, and, 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 uh, and understand, understand that God hears and he forgives us of all of our sins. Uh, now, saved people, those of us who are saved, uh, who've been born again, uh, uh, who, who've given our life over to Jesus, uh, that, that, that he convicts us of our sins as well. Uh, but but that, conviction, that conviction is to make us aware of our disobedience. Um, and for us to quickly uh, uh, ask for forgiveness and to restore fellowship with God. Uh, see, 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 once you become saved, um, you can never lose your relationship with God. Uh, uh, in fact, in Ephesians 1.13, it says that the moment you believe uh, and you confess Jesus as Lord and Savior, Holy Spirit now seals your salvation. Uh, and, and your salvation is sealed so you can never be unsaved uh, once you become saved. You know, and so, and so, so if you believe that you can be saved today and unsaved tomorrow, then it says whatever you did or you have more power than the Holy Spirit. Because Holy Spirit now seals your salvation. Um, and as a believer, when we sin, Holy Spirit convicts us of our sins um, so, so we can be aware of our disobedient behavior and confess it immediately and get back into fellowship with God. You know, um, and, 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 and see, repentance, repentance, uh, repentance is different from saying I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, uh, that, that you can sin and, and be disobedient and say I'm sorry, uh, but saying I'm sorry is not the same as repentance. Uh, repentance is a change of mindset. It's a change of attitude about uh, the behavior you've been engaging in. Uh, it's not just saying I'm sorry, uh, uh, but it's a mindset that says what I did was wrong. Uh, how I'm living is wrong. Uh, and because it's wrong, I need to change and move away from it. Uh, see, see, repentance is, is different from saying I'm sorry. And a lot of folk do things and then they just say I'm sorry, but in their heart, uh, they haven't repented. Uh, and tomorrow, in fact, <laughs> some folk have said, yeah, I did today, and do it tomorrow, I'll do it again. Well, that's not repentance. Uh, repentance is accepting the fact that what you said, what you did, your behavior is wrong. It was offensive to somebody else. It went against the word of God, uh, and I'm going to change my behavior. I'm going to change my actions. Uh, but with, with an individual who is unsaved, the role of Holy Spirit is to convict you of your sin that you will repent and turn around and accept the goodness of God in your life. Uh, that if you're listening to me today um, and you're unsaved, uh, it really is the voice of the Holy Spirit speaking to you right now uh, and simply convicting you of your sin to bring you to a point in your life uh, to realize that your behavior is wrong what God says about you is right, and you need to confess it and to accept him as your savior. Uh, because the ultimate rejection of Christ and never accepting him as Lord and savior of your life um, is that when you die, uh, you'll spend eternity separated from God. Uh, and that's not God's will for your life. And so if you're hearing me right now and you're unsaved, uh, it's Holy Spirit right now speaking to you through a believer uh, that God would that none should perish, but all should come into the knowledge of him, and you can receive him now as Lord and Savior of your life.
Okay, all right, all right. Uh, let me close this Bible study out. Uh, to the Romney, to the Romney, uh, 28 3 says, and you will be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when you go out, blessed when you come in. The Ark of the Government in Obed Edom's house, not only was Obed Edom blessed, but his entire household was blessed. And on today, believers, if you activate the presence of God in your life, uh, if you believe that he is what he says he is, uh, and you trust him, and you have his presence, not just in your physical house, uh, the architectural apartment uh, of the house you live, but in this house, uh, in this physical house, uh, uh, where he dwells on the inside, if you have him in your house, both houses, he makes the difference. And the word says, you'll be blessed in the city, you'll be blessed in the field, you'll be blessed when you go out, you'll be blessed when you come in. Let me ask you, do you want the blessings of the Lord uh, in your house, over your house, and all the members of your house? It's possible. You simply have to believe, you have to act on it. If there's another member in your house today who's unsaved, then you now have the responsibility to go to them and to share with them what the Word of God says. Always through prayer, though, uh, you have a responsibility now to share the Word with them. If you're unsaved, uh, then it's your responsibility right now to invite them into your house, to your house. He wants to bless you. He wants to live on the inside of you. Listen, blessings to you on the day. Uh, may the peace and presence of God continue to smile on you. Uh, and as I close, don't be so quick yet to come out of the house. Uh, seek the presence of the Lord. Let the Lord speak to you on how he wants to direct your life. Bless you on the day. Uh, let's close out with prayer. Like God, how we thank you. Thank you for your ever abiding presence in our lives. We give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory. Thank you for the joy of knowing that you promised never to leave us nor to forsake us. Now bless somebody's life today. Heal and deliver. Save on today. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. See you on this coming Sunday. Blessings to you and your family. Stay encouraged.